What's up guys and welcome back for the second part of the World of Warcraft Hardware Benchmarks. If you didn't watch the first video, I suggest you to go and check it out. In this video, we are benchmarking one of the most important parts of the game, the ride. And as well, I have added some more CPU and GPU to the previous benchmarks. A Ryzen 7 1700 and the two best mainstream CPU we have at the moment, the Ryzen 5 2600 and the Intel i5 8400. I have as well three new GPU, a Radeon Vega 64, a GeForce GTX 1080 Ti and the new GeForce RTX 2080. The other components are still the same, a kit of G-Skill Flare X 3200C14, a Seasonic Prime Gold 850W, a Nikkei water block full custom loop, a Samsung 28 inches, 4K display, a Samsung 960 EVO and Windows 10 with the latest patch and updates. This time I did the test with a different approach. First I'm going to test all the CPU that I have with an RTX 2080, which is one of the most powerful cards we have right now. The test, if not specified, is at quality 10 to show you the worst case scenario. No surprise that the top performer is the Core i7. In the second place, we have the Ryzen 7 2700X, but overclocked to 5 GHz and to reach this frequency, I had to cool down with an extreme cooling at minus 95 degrees, so it's not a system that you can use for daily use. Let's say that the real second place is for the i5 8400. If you're wondering why I didn't test again the unlocked i3, it's because we already know that it's placed somewhere near the 8700K and the 7700K overclocked. Same goes for the 8700K. The core count is not relevant, only frequency and IPC. And that's why the first generation Ryzen and without overclock are a bit behind. At 1440p we have more or less the similar results. At 1080p, again, no difference at all. As expected, changing the resolution does not affect the CPU. But this chart doesn't tell you the big picture, so that's why I prepared for you some gameplay with different configuration. This is a boss world quest. As you can see, the FPS is more or less around 40 to 50. If you look at the left, you will notice that we have only one core working and the GPU is doing practically nothing. And as I said in the last video, a variable sync display is a must in these situations. Here we are in Boralus, one of the worst areas you can put your CPU to work on. Keep in mind that this game is single threaded and with a lot of people around, if the area is overcrowded, your performance will drop. With the Ryzen 3 2200G we are in the same situation. Now there aren't too many players around, but sometimes you hardly hit 30 FPS and you can go below 20. But luckily, if you move out of town and you go in other zones, even if very populated by monsters, there's no problem at all, even with big fights, to maintain a stable FPS above 60. Now we are back in Boralus with the Ryzen 5 2600. Being a second generation Ryzen, the performance are slightly better. Not to guarantee a steady 60 FPS, but even not to go below 30 FPS. To have some fun, I pushed the Ryzen 7 2700X with sub zero cooling and minus 95 degrees Celsius. And then, to see the difference, if raising the frequency was going to help our FPS in this city. Here we are, 5 GHz with the Ryzen 7 2700X. The problem is that we gain something, but I think it's like 5 to 6, 7 FPS. Not a big deal, but was just for fun to see the difference. 
I really hope that the next generation Ryzen next year will have some IPC improvement because the only by the frequency is not enough. Last but not least, we have our top performer, the Core i7-8700K overclocked to 5GHz. Reaching 5GHz with an unlocked Core i7 or i5 or i3 is very easy with the last generation, and if you do it properly, it really helps on World of Warcraft. But even our top performer can be put on his knees. This is a raid for a world quest boss. As you can see we have a lot of player out of spell, the GPU is not at 100% and the CPU is really pushed down hard. Check the FPS, you are going below 40 and sometimes 30 FPS and playing like this was a bit difficult. But this will be probably the worst case scenario you will face in the game. Now keep an eye to the FPS. When the people goes away from the from the instance, the FPS is constantly rising. And now we are going to reach more than 100 FPS. 4K quality 10. Now we are at the dungeon performance test, Waycrest Manor. I think I did this instance like 500 times, but you know what, I still like it. Once again Intel is leading, followed by the second gen Ryzen and the first gen Ryzen, with the special results of the Ryzen 7 1700 overclocked to 5GHz. At 1440p we have more or less the same results, but the i7 is really pushing a lot of FPS. If you have a 1440p 144Hz display, well the i7 is the way to go. In Full HD we have more or less the same results and it seems that 156 is the maximum FPS we can reach. Needless to say, I was able to play very nice with all the CPU I've tested. Ok, let's go with the GPU test. To do this test I'm using the i7-8700K overclocked to 5GHz to limit the CPU bottleneck as much as possible. Unless you have a 4K 144 display, keep in mind that you can buy a 1080 or a Vega 64 and save some money for a better CPU. Testing the GTX 1060 and the RX 570 was not that smooth, but if you lower the details to quality 7, you can play in 4K without any problem. As well, I tried the RX 560 in DirectX 11 and well, you can play somewhere good at quality 4. At 1440p we have a overall good FPS, a bigger card is needed if you want to play at high refresh rate, but as well if you have only a RX 560 and you lower down the quality at level 5, you can play in Full HD. An RX 570 or a GTX 1060 is more than enough. The RX 560 is not yet at that quality to play at quality 10, but probably a GTX 1050 or 1050 Ti will do the job. So, to summarize, here you have the chart with all the data you need to know about the free resolution that I tested. Let's see now our graphics card how will perform in the dungeon. Playing with the top 4 cards in 4K was really good. Uh, playing with the GTX 1060 in 4K was a bit stretched and you can but it's better to play at quality 7. Playing with the RX 570, well, that was really painful to do at uh, 30 FPS. At 1440p every card that I tested was more than ok. In Full HD we have more than 100 FPS and reaching 156 FPS with the top cards. And here we are. This is the part that cost me a lot of time to do it, because I did various bosses with the same configuration to have the average. 
consider that to do all the testing, most of the time I was in cooldown, so no loot. I think I deserve a like for this, right? Honestly, I'm a bit surprised about this, because we have the Ryzen 7 2700X that in right is performing almost at the same level of the 8700K at default speed. And another surprise is for the Ryzen 3 2200G. With a proper graphics card, you don't even need to overclock it to have a nice experience. And that's why I really think this CPU is the perfect match to start with a low budget and then to upgrade your system. But let's see all this CPU in action. Beware. 
and here you are with the most powerful configuration you can buy right now to play World of Warcraft. This is the last clip for today. As you can see, we have a lot of FPS, and well, sorry for the audio, but my capture card messed up and I didn't have the time to redo all the things. Anyway, uh, this is one of the best configuration you can buy to play World of Warcraft, but is that really necessary to have all these FPS? Because here I'm playing at 4K and uh, there's only a couple of monitor that can run at more than 60 FPS in 4K and they are really expensive. I really enjoy to play with high frequency displays, but if I had to choose between 4K and a lower resolution and more FPS, more Hertz, I will choose definitely for the 4K. And this of course is only my personal preference. Unfortunately, I didn't have the time to test all the GPU and the low budget system like the 2200G or the 2400G. I will do it for the third part of this video that hopefully I will be able to do it for the end of this month. Let me know in the comment section what you would like to see in the third part and I will try to do it. Hope you like the video, if you do, hit the like button, subscribe for more and see you the next one.